Today, I'll show you how I speed painted the deities from A Rise of the Jade Throne. A 3D printable miniature campaign currently running on my mini factory. So let's get to work. First up, I want to say how great this campaign is. Golden Thief Studio included a lot of value. It comes with miniatures for two different factions, props, scatter terrain, modular wall tiles, and a set of three different base types, round, hex, and square. They're all pre-supported sculpts, and they're all top-notch. All the milestones or stretch goals have all been unlocked, so if you pledge, you'll get the entire set. They're even throwing in a painting handle. At the time of the posting, this video, there is less than a week left to pledge. If you do miss the campaign, however, or if you see this video in the future, all the models will be available on their store. This is my first miniature painting tutorial that I posted on my channel, but I really wanted to do what I can to help out Golden Thief Studios. So here it is. I like to use Silly Putty to mask off parts of the model I don't want sprayed when airbrushing. Here I filled up the connection points for the wings for Quetzalcoatl. The superglue will hold better on a resin to resin connection. My philosophy in painting is generally to get miniatures on the table quickly. I don't have a ton of patience to spend tons of hours painting one miniature, so most of my painting techniques favor lots of quick low stress techniques that yield good results. Most speed painting generally only has two or three steps, but I like to layer these techniques so it looks like I spent a lot more time than I did. Though they are broken up in these tutorials, I pen in them both at the same time using each technique on both before moving to the next. I finished both of these god-sized figures over the course of two days, probably spending between four and five hours on each one. Though they didn't sponsor this video, they sent me the files I'm painting for free of charge to make this video. If you want to see the master at work for this type of painting style, go check out Marco at Not Just Mecca. I try to emulate his speed painting videos and I've learned a ton from him. I love the makers of this campaign. Golden Thief Studio is big on telling immersive stories that go along with their products. You should check them out. I've gotten to know them pretty good through the course of this campaign and they're great people. Even if this campaign doesn't float your boat, you should go and fill out the survey they have out. They're interested in getting your ideas for future campaigns. I'll leave links to the campaign, all their socials, and the survey in the description of this video. But, if you're running an Aztec-themed D&D campaign, or even if you have a lot of jungle encounters, this set is for you, and would be a big hit for your players. I really should have thinned the contrast paint before applying it. The underpainting that I took the time applying would have shown through better if I had. But, live and learn. Sometimes when speed painting, I'm moving too fast to always be focused on the minutia of the painting plan. We didn't have time to work out the minutia of the plan! I'm a big fan of using transparent paints. I'll use Citadel Contrast, Army Painter Speed Paints, all kinds of inks, anything I can get my hands on. I like how your undercoat shows through, and even with a basic Zenithal Prime, you can make a paint job look pretty good quickly. If you enjoyed this video, or you found anything helpful, why don't you smash that subscribe button? And hey, it really couldn't hurt to hit that like button either. Oftentimes, I'll add highlights to the model before shading. I don't always have the best blends, so adding an oil wash after or contrast layer can help blend your highlights for you without stressing about it. Now that all the base coats are down, it's time to give it an oil wash. I like to use cleaned out tuna cans for oil washes when I need a large amount especially when painting terrain. I love using oils for miniature painting. It's really not as difficult as many seem to think. It can certainly be scary dousing your miniature in oil, especially with the horror stories that you can see on YouTube. But people talk about shade paints being like talent in a bottle, and this holds true for oils as well. The added benefit is that you can wipe the oil away from raised areas that you don't want shaded, so you don't have to go back and rebase coat those areas. It's a much faster workflow and a lot cheaper once you have the supplies. Speaking of cheaper, I see a lot of YouTubers that use oils and oil washes use the Mona Lisa brand of mirror spirits or thinner. I see it on Amazon and it's way too expensive. You can get the same amount at Lowe's if you're in the US for less than half the price. Mineral spirits have a lot of other uses besides painting with oils, so if you check your local hardware store, there's a good chance they will sell it for less than you'll find products that are marketed to painters. I think Army Painter kind of gets a bad rap for nothing. 
Are they the best paints on the market? No, but they're cheap and readily available, which makes them a popular choice when starting out. I still have a bunch of them. I just can't justify upgrading every paint when they'll get the job done. I'm all about making do with what I have. I'm not just proxy hobby for proxy miniatures. I'll proxy just about anything in the hobby if it's going to save me time or money. With this project, I didn't spend a ton of time highlighting. Just one color in most cases, just for the uppermost areas. Thanks for watching my video. As usual, please like and subscribe. And hey, this time go check out Golden Thief Studios. I'm sure you'll be hearing more from them in the future.